Hey, how's it going on guys? My name is Decipher and welcome to the Cinema 4D uh, render position tutorial. Basically, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how I make my renders in Cinema 4D. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks <laughs> that I use, how I get my ideas. Uh, I've got a list on my monitor on the left. What rig I use, what Lightroom I use, extruding, which isn't too difficult. Changing the subdivision weight, facial expression, using a certain website for ideas, uh, render positions, changing the size of legs and arms, the camera angles, using models and rigs, and render placement in banners. Alright, so first of all, what you want to do is get a Lightroom. I'm using the Shadows and Flash Lightroom. I'll put the link in the description of the video. Alright, so once you have your Lightroom set up, you just want to delete the camera, click on the Lightroom, click on the user data, scroll down to room, just turn the room off. Now what you want to do is drag in your rig, so I already have my rig here, I'm using the Anishwidge V9, uh, you can use any rig really, I suggest using the Anishwidge rig or the Glow Edit by Aether or any other FMR edit, but I suggest using ones with fingers and good facial expressions. Alright, so once you have your rig in Cinema 4D and your Lightroom, to load up the skin, just gonna click on, for this rig, click on the character on the top and you load him in. So I have my skin here, I've deleted the eyes out in Photoshop, so yeah, you want to do that. Alright, so once you have your skin on the render, uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to do some extruding. Now, I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this, but what you want to do is you want to click on the head, you just drag it away, this is the top layer, uh, you click on live selection and then polygon, it's really simple, you click on the boxes that you want to extrude, you um, you right click, you go on extrude, maximum angle is 91 and offset is how large you want it to be and then you click apply and there you go, that is how to extrude. So I'm going to do this for the whole character and I'll be back. So once you've extruded the top layer of the head, you just want to drag it back into the middle, uh, you want to go down here on the X corner and just type in zero and there it is. Alright so I have finished my extruding it took me about five minutes and it shouldn't take you any longer than that. Uh, the next thing you want to do is click on the, uh, the head, uh, go on polygons and life selection, you're going to go into the middle, click on brush, on here change the radius to about 40 and you drag it up slightly, you drag the sides out slightly, um, but you only, this is like subtle changes, so don't do this too much. Uh, you can do the hair as well, sort of drag it out, and the back if you really want to. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to change the subdivision weight on the render. So you want to click on this and click um, press Q and on the screen scroll up, you scroll up and as you can see uh, it's really bubbly. It's very round but you want to change it so it's not as round. Same as the body as well. Uh, it's, it's pretty round but sometimes you don't want it to be that round. So I'm going to show you how to change this. So to do this, uh, you want to turn the scrollers all the way down, uh, you can't do it while it's on. So I'm going to do the head first, so you go click on the head, go to uh, lines and then go on the life selection, click on here and you press Control A to select all and then you go to subdivision surface and on subdivision surface you can type in 80, select set, go back and then turn it on and there you go. It has changed from very smooth to not as smooth. So you're going to want to do this with all of the bodies, so you want to do it with the arms, you want to do both layers as well for the arms. 
so as you see there's the under layer of the arm here and then the outer layer which is the red bits so you want to do both of them and you want to do it for the legs as well for the fingers it's a little bit different uh, let me just get the fingers out and uh, let me drag the arm out oh whoops I can't do that alright so for the fingers uh, what you want to do is you want to uh, click on one and then press shift and then click on all the other fingers and then you do it again so you can't do the fingers um, with the arms you have to do them separately all right next I'm going to show you facial expressions um, facial expressions are really really important when making renders uh, so obviously you have this here to help you um, this is for the eyes uh, you really want to mess around with this for about uh, five to ten minutes because they are really really important and they are just important as render positions. Alright so this is where I get my ideas from for render positions. I use Pinterest and I have a bunch of saved render positions that are drawn. You can use these as ideas, you don't have to copy them. Uh, you, what I normally do is I take two or three ideas and combine them, take things away and I just experiment. So what I usually type in is action, action poses and it will come up with a bunch of action poses that you can use. You can see their facial expressions, they're usually really angry and uh, yeah. You can also type in on Google midair action poses and you can get some pretty good ones here. Uh, with facial expressions, uh, obviously you can do them like by yourself, it shouldn't be too difficult, but if you have any difficulties then you just type in facial expressions on Google and you can see um, what you can use. Alright, so here is a pre-made render that I did um, for my last uh, speed art. And I'm going to show you the facial features that I used for this one. Alright, so what I've done is I've made him look pretty angry. His mouth is sort of angry as well. And as you can see, I've made him so that his teeth are showing. And it's not just all white. So to do that, what you want to do is, uh, you're going to have to turn on subdivision. So if I turn it down, it won't work. So subdivisions, you need that on, and make sure you do the subdivision weight change. Uh, you want to go into the uh, render, you want to go into the character user data. Uh, you want to go down to uh, facial features here. So you go down to the mouth, and here's the teeth type. So you got normal, and you got solid. So I prefer normal to solid. Uh, so yeah, you can also change the type of mouth, so that's supposed to be normal, and that's pretty rigid. Uh, I prefer rigid, to be honest, I don't really use normal too much. Right, I'm not going to show you how to do uh, a certain render pose, so I'm just going to show you this one that I made. Um, basically, he's flying through the air, and he's shooting a gun at the camera. Just a tip for you guys, um, I try and make the renders pop out at the camera, so as you can see on this one, the gun is popping out of the camera, and the head is sort of popping out. If you're having difficulty with the legs, then maybe they might not be long enough that you want them to be, you can change the size of them. So I click on the leg, and I go to the resize, I've actually resized this one slightly. So you can change the size of them, you can make them really big or really small, um, but I usually do it quite subtly. Um, so yeah, I've changed the size of this one a little bit and also this one. Sometimes you can do it with the arms as well, but it's quite difficult um, with the fingers, um, so I just tend to do it with the legs. Uh, camera, camera angle is really, really important as well. So to choose a camera, what you want to do is you just want to click on this, and there you go, that's your camera. So if you, to enable your camera, you want to click on this um, white thing, camera thing. 
you want to move it and camera angles are really really important just as important as render positions so you want to spend quite a lot of time perfecting that camera angle making sure that he is possibly as 3D as possible and not 2D so this one here that I've just made uh, you want to keep on moving it so for this the gun should be popping out if I just block this one so the gun I want the gun popping out uh, you want to move it resize it as much as possible to make it as good as possible alright so using models and rigs so there are quite a few models and rigs out there that you can use I've made a couple myself for this one I'm using my magnum rig that I made and some bullets out coming out of his hand um, I would suggest not using a sword I rarely use swords in my renders just because they are so overly used and they're generally boring. What you want to do with your renders is make them really unique and creative. Alright, so this is the render that I um, that I made. Alright, so I'm now in Photoshop and I've just loaded up my layout for my banners. Um, the size of the banners is 2560 by 1440. Alright, so I just dra dragged in uh, the render. You, I just did Control H to turn off the guidelines. Now, render placement is pretty important as well. Uh, you don't want it to be too small, like this. And let me just put the layout above. And you don't want it to be too large, like this, because then you won't have room for another render. But a middle is pretty good, so. You can use a rotate tool as well, and I think this size is pretty good. I tend not to use the whole render in the banner, um, like for I don't, I'm not really using the uh, the bullets here. But what I normally do is I I move stuff, so I can move the bullets if I wanted to. I copy them and I just move them here so that they are in view of the banner so yeah I think that is it uh, also one thing is you usually have like these white things here um, you can remove them in Cinema 4D but I think it's just easier to just remove it in Photoshop so you click on this rectangle or polygon tool here and you just wanna select the white bits and then just press delete if that, if that error comes up, then you just want to rasterize the layer and then just delete it. So that's generally how I make my renders. I don't think I have anything else to say except from make sure you take your time in making renders. Um, do not rush them. And good luck. Try and be as creative as possible. Um, and being as unique as you can will make your banners or thumbnails or whatever you're making look so much better. If this tutorial helped you guys make sure to leave a like uh, and subscribe if you're not ready. Also I'm gonna do another tutorial at maybe 200 likes of this video. Um, if you have any tutorial suggestions that you want me to do then comment it down below and I'll reply as soon as I can. Peace.